All your canisters use them, some more than others. We're talking about spell components today on the Thaco Factor, right after this. Now starting here the first week of July, I'm going to be hosting a Dungeons & Dragons group for some disabled veterans at the local PRC Center in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Now, these guys are all part of the group that meets there regularly on a daily basis, except for on the weekends, of course. Now, I won't be able to have photographs, I can't do any audio, and I won't be able to disclose any names. But, if you're interested, let me know in the comments, and I'll let you guys know how things are going with them. First thing I'm going to have to do is take a look at the player's handbook. Make sure we understand this correctly. Uh, page 40, under character spells. First paragraph reads, The casting of spells, clerical and magical, is a very important aspect of play. Most spells have a verbal component, and so must be uttered. Most spells have a somatic component. Movement of the caster's body, such as gesturing. Some spells have a third component, that of material. Now I'm going to jump over a few paragraphs. And here it says, once cast, a spell is totally forgotten, gone. The mythical symbol impressed upon the brain carried power. And speaking, the spell discharges this power, draining all memory of the spell used. Now this does not preclude multiple memorizations of the same spell. But, it does preclude multiple uses of a single spell memorized but once. When a spell caster shoots his or her spell bolt, so to speak, it's gone. Now there are two kinds of spells. You have the spells that are bestowed upon you by divine intervention. And then you have spells that are from memorization. Well, the ones from divinity would be your clerical or druidic spells. Um, the memorization spells thus would be your magic users and illusionists. Now, most of your clerical spells require a few hours if not more of a prayer to your deity of choice. Then upon completion your uh, spell is divinely placed in your brain for use. A magic user and illusionist spells, they're through memorization through your spell book. Now, it could take a few hours, it could take nine, ten hours per spell just to memorize that spell. One of the primary key components of your clerical and Judaic spells would be your holy symbol, be it a cross, um, whatever the symbol of your deity of choice is. Uh, that's for clerics, not for druids. On the other hand, that would be a mistletoe or an oak leaf. Now, all the spells require a verbal component, be it something of divinity or arcane words of wisdom. Now, your somatic component, that would be hand gestures, body movement, contortion, all kinds of different things that would involve using your body. Now, when it comes to material components, they can start getting costly. It'd be nothing to go out there, dry up some poison ivy or poison oak, so you can make your itching powder. But when it comes to other things like diamond dust, that can get very, very expensive. Most material components will just fit in a little pocket inside your robes, or a little pouch or something like that. Some of your material components, you can just stumble across them while you're adventuring. Others require a specific mission to go and seek out these special components. In my campaign setting, I turn around and I have a, what I'm calling a bounty hunter. Uh, it's a little organization that I have called a Bounty for Bounty, where they hire the PCs to go out and acquire different material components for spells to be sold at the shops. It never fails. Whatever mission my PCs are on, the guys at Bounty for Bounty know ahead of time what they're going to come across. Some of your material components 
might require seeking an alchemist. You know, like if you need, say, mercury or phosphorus or sulfur or something like that. But if you need holy water, you can always create that yourself or you can get it from your order. I'd personally say that the druids probably got the short end of the stick on this. They have to physically gather all their materials themselves. And most of them are found right there in the woods. But you need a special tool to collect your holy symbol. For a lot of your spell casting as a druid, it requires greater mistletoe. This can only be gathered on Midsummer's Eve with a pair of gold and silver shears. Man, that's expensive. Just to collect your mistletoe. And it can't touch the ground. It has to be caught in a special kind of bowl. Sometimes the magic users, they get a bad rep too when they're having to go gather materials. Say you have to go with their bad guano. You might need guano from a specific kind of bat, not just any old bat. I can go on about material components for a long time. Some dungeon masters use them, some dungeon masters don't. Some just house rule them out. Because not everybody likes using material components. It's up to you whether you want to do it in your game or not. Let me know in those comments below. Now I know this has been a really short video and I hope I hit this topic pretty good for everybody. Hey, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video.